Hi, for this video what I want to do is show you how to find the missing side length using the Pythagorean Theorem. So the Pythagorean Theorem is only used in a right triangle, so this only applies to a right triangle. Um, the sum of the squares of the legs of the triangle is equal to the hypotenuse squared. So basically what that's saying is that if I have my first leg squared plus my second leg squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Remember that the hypotenuse always is opposite of the right angle. and it's always the longest side. Okay, so the hypotenuse has to be longer than the um, other side. So if you don't have a uh, picture drawn, just remember that the longest side always has to go by itself. Okay, so what we have here is in our first one, we are missing our hypotenuse. So we're missing the hypotenuse. So we need to find C in this one. Okay. So it doesn't matter which one you pick as A and B because 8 squared plus 6 squared is the same thing as 6 squared plus 8 squared. Um, so the commutative property does apply there. It doesn't matter what order. So you can pick either one to be A and either one to be B. And so I would just set it up as A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And I'm just going to let this one be A and this one be B. Okay, so I'm going to say that 8 squared plus 6 squared is equal to C squared. So 8 squared gives me 64 plus 36 equals C squared. And so this is a nice one um, because the sum of 64 and 36 is 100, which is a perfect square. So when I find the square root of both sides, I end up with C equals 10. This is known as a Pythagorean triple because this is an exact value that happens. You end up with a perfect square. Okay, so um, for this one, it was a nice one where we did end up with a perfect square. So let's look at a second one. This time we're trying to find A. Okay, so this would be B and this would be C because it is opposite of the right angle. Okay, so it's opposite of my right angle here. So I would set this up as A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared, which I started to write C instead of 9. So 9 squared. So then if I just simplify and do the math, I end up with a squared plus 49 is equal to 81. And when I subtract 49 from both sides, I end up with a squared equals 32. Well, 32 is not a nice value as far as being a perfect square. So when I plug this into my calculator, I'm going to get a decimal approximation. So with this, sometimes it's going to ask for an exact value. Technically, this is an exact value, um, but it's not simplified. So a lot of times when they ask for an exact value, you are going to want to simplify it. So what you can do is you can go through and find the largest perfect square that divides evenly into 32. So I could say that this is really 16 times 2 because 16 is a perfect square. 2 is prime, so I can't simplify that. So the square root of 16 would be 4. And 4 square root 2 would be the exact answer simplified. So if it asks for an exact answer, that's what they are looking for. Um, if it asks for an approximate answer, then you would just plug it into your calculator. And so if I do the square root of um, 32 in my calculator, I get approximately 5.66 um, units. Uh, I did round this to the nearest hundredth. You, when you plug this in, it is irrational, so it will go on forever and ever, but that's the approximate value. So make sure that you do follow the directions of what you're given. If it asks for an exact value, then they want you to leave it in terms of a square root or a radical, um, where it is simplified down to where there are no perfect squares left underneath the radical. Um, if they want an approximate answer, then you would just plug it into your calculator. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you would like me to cover, please let me know that as well.